Welcome to Sports News. The Super Eagles of Nigeria have crashed out of the ongoing African Nations Championship in Rwanda following a 1-0 loss to Guinea, who progressed to the quarterfinals. Guinea's winner came on the stroke of halftime as Ibrahim Asankon turned the ball in from the edge of Nigeria's six-yard box. The night. Watch out for Sankon. You've got plenty of Kamaras in the uh, in this uh, Guinea side as Nigeria playing in white uh, from right to left to get the game going. Ball comes out wide to uh, Akas. Got support play from uh, Agre. This uh, Guinea side also, if you actually look at the number of players from different teams. Meanwhile, Tunisia have booked their place in the quarterfinals with a 5 0 win over Niger in Kigali. The North Africans scored two in the first half and three in the second end as Group C winners, leapfrogging both Guinea and Nigeria who exit the competition. The Nigerian women's basketball team, the Tigress, will begin their chase for a place at this year's Olympics in Rio de Janeiro from June the 13th to the 19th in France. The Tigresses were drawn in Group C of the playoffs along with Belarus and South Korea. Cuba, France, New Zealand, Cameroon, Turkey, Venezuela, Spain, China and Argentina are the other countries in the playoffs. And in tennis, world number one Novak Djokovic cruised into the last four of the Australian Open after dismissing Kei Nishikori in straight sets. The 28-year-old swept past his Japanese opponent 6-3, 6-2, 6-4 in two hours, seven minutes to reach his 29th Grand Slam semi-final and sixth at Melbourne Park. Up next for Djokovic is 17-time Grand Slam champion Roger Federer. And in the women's event, reigning champion Serena Williams has advanced to the last four of the Australian Open. Williams edged out fifth seed Maria Sharapova for the 18th match in a row with a 6-4, 6-1 victory. Williams has reached the last four at Melbourne Park on six previous occasions and gone on to win the title every time. Agnieszka Radvanska will face Williams in the semis after beating Spain's Carla Suarez Navarro 6-1, 6-3. It's game set and match on Sports News and back to Ijoma with the rest of the news at 10. Three South African police officers are being questioned over the incident that led to the death of a 33-year-old Nigerian last Saturday. The matter has been referred to the Independent Police Investigative Directorate and that's the body which monitors the South African police. Our correspondent in South Africa, Betty Dibia, reports. They've killed him just like that. That's Imagine. Right. What they did was to use a telephone. They tear down him and face the telephone and tied him. That was how he suffocated and died. The policeman that killed him, and we are still talking, he was laughing at us. Are we animals? Are we dog and chickens that have been slaughtered in South Africa? It's still pretty much their words against the police three days after Daniel Chinedu lost his life. The Independent Police Investigative Directorate, IPIN, is actually working on the matter to investigate all the details around that particular issue and so forth. And therefore, the manner in which we will have to respond ourselves as the South African Police Service must then be informed by what the investigation would, would then bring up. So we visited the Independent Police Investigative Directorate, IPIT, to find out the latest on the matter. Currently we have three members, um, three police officers that um, actually were there initially when the incident happened. Um, these are the, 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 the police officers that you would be questioning. Mr. Rabarabo also confirmed that the post-mortem on the deceased has gone ahead, but the result cannot be made public just yet. Some Nigerian Union officials are, however, worried they had no representation during the process. All is not lost. If that person decides to come, our pathologist would be there to actually brief, and the body would still be available. 
Also, to take the case or investigation further, witnesses must come forward. The, the physical evidence that is there on the body would have to actually be supported by the eyewitnesses that are there. So in the absence of that, it would be difficult for us to actually go, go ahead with it. So which is why it's important for these people to come through and tell us exactly what happened. South Africa would have to assure us that there will not be any retaliation. Then we can produce the eyewitness. There is an eyewitness who is afraid to come out, but we know him. We would not be releasing this information until uh, these guys come forward and depose their statement, because otherwise we'll be preempting what is going to happen. If these people allege that they have seen what happened, then they need to come to us before the official results of the, the post-mortem are actually released. Now all eyes are on the process to see justice carried out for the deceased who came to South Africa in March 2015. He leaves behind three children. The Nigerian Union Gauteng chairman will be addressing the Nigerian community in Kempton Park, the scene of the incident, on Wednesday. Betsy Dibia, Channels Television News. And the main news again. A witness in Ulisa Metu's trial today told the court that the PDP National Publicity Secretary's company got paid 400 million naira by the NSA's Office for Security Services without any contract signed. We also brought you a report that the federal government is determined to sustain the war against corruption, notwithstanding persistent blackmail by the opposition. And from South Africa, the police authorities today questioned three policemen over the death of a Nigerian in their custody. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks a lot for staying with us. I'm Rijo Mahdi Nyato. Have a good night.